Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. This is going to be our February compilation video uh, for new folks to the channel. First of all, welcome. Uh, enjoy your stay. We do these videos beginning of every month looking at the expected releases for the given month. This is going to be February of 2023. And so we have a plethora of releases domestically and from overseas as well. We will start out in the domestic land, as we always do, to sort of, uh, you know, get those of you who don't follow the import scene uh, out the door quickly. One release from Revell that actually came out at the end of last month that was not an expected release necessarily, and that is the 85 Camaro Z28. Uh, 124 scale, this is the old monogram kit. It says the skill of war, but the monogram kit was a snap die kit. So this is another one of the uh, kits that Ravel has de-snap tighted, so to speak, which out you know that didn't actually do anything to the model kit. They just don't mention it's a snap tight kit anymore. And magically, it grows in skill level. Uh, you've seen this with the uh, Impala SS when it stopped being the snap tight Caprice. It suddenly became a, a glue kit and uh, was suddenly a skill level like three kit <laughs> or skill level two kit anyway, instead of being a skill level one snap tight. Uh, a bunch of decals added to this, probably the only redeeming quality, if you've not, I mean, if you've never had one of these before, I, I guess it's kind of sort of the best one of the mid-80s Camaros, only because the MPC kits all had uh, T-tops cut into the roof. But the big selling point this time around, of course, would be the fact that it has all of this very robust decal sheet included with the, uh, the seat pattern in it and all that stuff and the stripes being in multiple colors and things of that nature. So it's out there if you're interested. Uh, Mobius released a couple of kits this weekend, go, just passed. The surprise, actually surprised quite a few people because nobody was really expecting uh, these releases. First up, you have a re modified reissue of the 64 Nova, this time coming as a Resto mod. Now, if you bought back when it came out the 64 Nova SS kit, you know, notice there's a lot of day two parts in that kit that didn't have any call-outs on the instructions and you didn't use them. There were several valve cover options. There were several induction options. I believe there's a, a shifter and like gauge cluster options and things like that, that again, you didn't use building a factory stock Nova SS. Well, here's why they were in the kit. This has a cowl induction hood, pretty mi modest and mild cowl induction. It's not a street outlaws, like, <laughs> drag racing hood or anything else like that. But a cowl induction hood's been added, as well as what they're calling, quote, five-slot chrome wheels, which appear to be like Chevy 2 Rally wheels. Uh, it's like out of a 67 Impala or something along those lines. Uh, there seem to be traction bars on the built model on the box. I can't remember, because I haven't looked in mine since I bought it, if there's traction bars in the original SS, if that's just some parts you didn't use, or if those have been added. But, uh, yeah, this is generally a day two, day three type of thing with a few new pieces added to all the pieces that already existed in that kit to make uh, something new. This is one of those very rare Mobius kits that didn't really have a lot of propaganda around it in the sense that this was shown at the IPMS show in... Indianapolis back in April of 2022, and there really wasn't a lot of talk about it other than coming soon, we don't really know when, but it'll be out eventually, and then all of a sudden it showed up, and there was not really any sort of big push as to what was new about this other than, again, the few things that were mentioned back last year about the hood and the wheels and stuff like that. So there may be other new things in there, uh, but as of right now, there's not really any kind of uh, big lead-in <laughs> to that story as far as, like, oh, all of these crazy new things, it's... Like, we put a whole extra bunch of stuff in that kit. Remember, you didn't use it. We're going to use it this time around. Also, reissue of the 65 Plymouth Satellite Golden Commandos AFX car. Uh, much uh, requested reissue from them because this was a Model King kit. Still a Model King kit. Uh, but a big chunk, like more than half of the production run, went to the Golden Commandos drag team. They still run a vintage drag uh, merch trailer and things like that. So they were selling them themselves. And the hobby section of the market really didn't get too many of these. And these went out the door in a big fat hurry because this is also one of the first AFX cars that, uh, that Mobius had done at the time. So if you were looking for one of these and you didn't want to pay the ridiculous scalping prices for them, uh, your patience has paid off. These are out pretty much the entire run went to the hobby this time. Most places that have these have bunches of them. So... If you happen to be interested in the in that, go out and grab one. Uh, they are plentiful at the moment. 
Going over to round two, several releases this month, several reissues, and uh, several new things. So first up, you have the 97 Ford F-150 4x4. This is the old Lindbergh kit. <coughs> I know what you're thinking. AMT did make a 97 Ford F-150, but it was not a uh, 4x4. Actually, Ravel made a 97 F-150. If you want to look back in history at what destroyed the modern pickup truck kit market in this country, it was the fact that Lindbergh, AMT, and Ravel all made 97 Ford F-150s, and they all made pretty much the same kit. AMTs and Ravels were two-wheel drive, F-150, XLT, standard cab, long beds, and then Lindbergh's, at least for them, was a flare side standard cab. This was about the time, 96, 97, when they started selling a lot of crew cabs. The ones with the little half doors that opened behind that gave you access to the back. And most of those came with short beds because you didn't put an 8-foot bed behind a longer cab at the time. That was just not, wasn't what was optioned at Ford. And, um, yeah, and most truck people bought four-wheel drives. There weren't that many two-wheel drive trucks sold. As I was in the used car industry in the 2000s, early 2000s, in a little gap in my driving, trying to do something else, which cost miserably failed because I'm still driving trucks at this point. Uh, but I did a lot of data entry for internet sales of used cars back when that was a thing that was brand new and nobody thought about it. Putting pictures of a used car online, who did that? Uh, most of them were short bed crew cabs and four-wheel drives. Yeah, none of these kits ever were that which is why they all failed miserably, because you made three of the, essentially the same thing. Anyway, Lindbergh's kit was the only four-wheel drive. If you ever wanted a four-wheel drive and you didn't realize that this kit existed because, ew, Lindbergh? Well, not ew, Lindbergh. 90s, 90s Lindbergh kits were actually really, very, very nice, competitive with anything that was made at the time. And you have the option to see that for yourself as they continue to take those 90s-era AMT uh, Lindbergh kits and put them in AMT boxes to separate them from the actual Lindbergh stuff that existed back in the 60s. Uh, next reissue, the 63 Corvette Convertible. This is a convertible. It does have a hard top, but it is a convertible. They make a, they make a coupe, too, but this is a convertible. Um, this has a bunch of stuff sort of ungated and included back in it for the first time since the AMT Prestige kit, um, 80s, 90s era. They did a whole bunch of the AMT classic kits in a bigger box that came with like car trophies and stanchions that you were supposed to run a rope through to create like a little car show, uh, type quasi mini vignette. It's not really a diorama. Uh, but yes. Yeah, the next reissue of this didn't have a, some of that stuff in it, and most of that stuff. I don't sure it has the trophies and the stanchions, but all of the custom parts and three-in-one nature of this kit has been restored back. Pad printed tires, new decals, 1970s era, street rods box art included in this one. And so, yeah, if you're a fan of 63 Corvettes, this is probably something you'd be interested in, as it has been like 25 years or so since it was released with all of its uh, goodies included. And this is the anniversary of the Corvette this year. A lot of, of the uh, model contests are going to have some form of Corvette theme to them. So there is that. Uh, reissue of this 1962 Impala Convertible. This was tooled up in the early mid 1990s, sort of the sister kit to the 409 Bel Air uh, bubble top and the 62 drag cars. Convertible body. It has two sets of wheels. I think it has the five. It says. Custom five-spoke mags. I think those are the five-spoke mags that they're in the Bel Air 409, but I cannot remember for sure, as I've never actually owned this kit to know what the other set of wheels are. But it builds pretty much a factory stock Impala convertible, so that's there. And then another reissue of a kit that was reissued not too terribly long ago, a 67 Shelby GT350 uh, in the US state, United States Postal Service Collector Tin. So part of the Auto Art Stamp Series in a big metal box. You can usually still find the most recent reissue of this at most hobby shops. Certainly, secondary markets like uh, toy sh or not toy sh model shows, eBay. The original ones on eBay aren't even that expensive from the 1990s when this kit was brand new. Not really a reason to buy this unless you're collecting the, the stamp tins, but yeah, that's going to be out there. And that brings us to the new stuff, right? The new exciting stuff, if you will, from round two this month. First up, the 66 Ford Mustang Fastback GT. Yes, this has a brand new body, brand new interior, obviously some brand new glass. And included in that brand new glass, clear headlights. 
actual separate headlight lenses. Also, I believe the taillight lenses are separate this time around, or they've been tweaked a little bit. I believe the, the fuel filler cap is tweaked to be the GT version as opposed to the 65 coupe version. And yeah, it's a three in one, so custom customizing kit, drag racing, factory stock. One of the first clone kits of 2023, right? Because this is cloned off the body of an original 66 kit. 66 fastback body was then turned into a variety of horrible things, none of which were ever in a position to be restored back to stock. And yeah, first time this kit has been available since 1966. So that's pretty cool. Next one of the clone kits for 2023, this, the 68 Pontiac GTO hardtop. So backstory here, they found a 68 Pontiac GTO promo and a 65 Pontiac GTO promo in a box of like 1990s era, 2000s era promos in the warehouse. Don't know why it was there, how it got there, but they were somebody got the bright idea. We should scan this and recreate this. And so what this is, is a recreated promo kit. But Craftsman Plus, they've added two sets of wheels. So you get Rally 1 wheels and Rally 2 wheels in here and outside mirrors. Being a promo, it never had mirrors originally. Also, they've tooled it up to have a separate hood and a separate engine insert for the chassis. So while there is not going to be a full detail kit of this, this isn't the trick they played with the C3 Nova where it came out with the, in the curbside Craftsman Plus and then it came out as a full kit. There was not a full kit of the 68 GTO that they had available to scan. So they scanned the, the promo and that is what, as far as we understand, that is what this is going to be. Just this. The hood is separate and the the, piece, the chassis piece is separate. For those of you who wish, wish to kit bash and include an engine and make a full detail kit out of this, uh, if you so desire. Last thing for this month from round two, the 68 Coronet Convertible RT. Certainly the most exciting uh, kit, probably for the, at least the first half of 2023. Uh, there might be some fighting in the stands about the OBS Chevy pickup trucks coming back, the 2022 Ford Broncos, uh, some other things that are planned for later this year that we can't really talk about publicly. But yeah, this is certainly one of the things that had the community a buzz. <laughs> uh, you see what I did there? And uh, it does come with that trailer. And this is a recreation, but sort of a modern interpretation of the original 68 Coronet Convertible Annual. There will be a hard top. I'm not going to buy this convertible. Convertibles just aren't my thing. Nothing against this kit itself. I will be pacing a hole in my floor until the hardtop comes out. And it has been publicly confirmed that there really will be a hardtop. So that's not just something I'm just talking into existence. It's going to be coming down the road. But uh, this has some tweaks done to the engine, some tweaks done to the chassis to make some of the parts separate, clear headlights, clear taillights. Uh, the upholstery pattern has been updated. A lot of things to this kit done to make it better. However, it is not like a 2023 modern state-of-the-art tooling. If you got the 2021 Dodge Charger and you're looking at 150 pieces of glorious Mopar, this is not that. This is the vintage kit, the vintage kit experience, but improved to be something that actually goes together, fits together, and can be assembled without throwing it against the wall. And it's not $350 like one of these original kits would have been. This is the first time a 68 Dodge Coronet convertible has been available since 1968. So if this is your boat, go float in it and show them your support. The better these retool remastered kits do, the more of them that there will be in the future, uh, in addition to like brand new kits like the Bronco and the, and the uh, Chargers. So that covers the U.S. Oh, wait, hang on. Got to do Salvino's. Salvino's got three kits coming out this month. Can't hardly forget these because they're Mustangs. After a plethora of Camaros until you couldn't see straight anymore, we're finally getting the Mustangs. First up, Austin Cindric's 2022 Daytona winner. Discount tire livery. It's a pretty sharp car uh, when you see it build up. Uh, not a lot going on decal-wise. I believe the car is molded in white. And the black decals will do everything else for you there. So it's a pretty basic decal design, not crazy wrap or anything else like that. And then the other 2022 kit is Joey Logano's championship winning car, Benzoil livery. This is going to be molded in yellow. Something I want to bring up real quick is if you want to build other 2022 kits. Now, uh, Power Slide's going to do Kevin Harvick's gear wrench car. They're going to do uh, Ryan Blaney's uh, 
2022 Menards livery with multiple hood options. Uh, I know that Three Amigos is going to uh, at least size and fit and reissue their white Castrol Keselowski car to this. If you want to get those 2022 decals, you need to buy 2022 kits. 2023, the hood changes. The vent openings are much bigger. They're different. And they are not going to make any more 2022 kits other than these two original kits. The Logano is pretty much sold out. Championship car. A lot of people want to collect it. NASCAR wants a lot of them themselves to sell. Uh, Austin Sindrick, a little less popular driver, obviously. New guy, rookie. And so there are some of those left around. Plus, that's Mulder and White's probably the better option for doing other schemes uh, decal-wise. But yeah, I just want there's 1500 of the Loganos, 1500 of the of the uh, Cindric cars. That's it. Keep in mind, very limited on those. If you want to grab them, grab them when you see them. This is not trying to create a FOMO or anything else like that. It is just the facts that these will sell rapidly because they're Mustangs. They're going to be new kits. There's nothing different about the chassis or anything else on these. They're just new bodies, basically. But yeah understand that if they go, they go, and there aren't going to be no mo. And then the other kit we're going to get is the 2023 Mustang, which if you paid close, close attention to the box art, you can see the differences in the hood vents. This is Ryan Blaney's Menards car with a Dursal uh, sub-logo to it. Uh, be interested to see if other people do like a hood sheet, because Ryan Blaney usually runs like several different associate sponsorships on the hood with the main Menards logo. Uh, that is obviously what the 2012, 2022 power slide decal is going to be about. So yeah, that'll be coming as well. So we're finally getting some Mustangs. And if you are into the whole concept of modern NASCAR, there is going to be a whole bunch more 2023 kits, both Camaros, Mustangs, and of course the Camrys coming in the first half of this year. So buckle up and hope you saved uh, a few pennies around the house uh, for those when they come out. Going overseas, touching on a couple things from last month real quick. Uh, first of all, that Red Devil Subaru Impreza rally car that we talked about was supposed to be molded in white. <laughs> Turns out it was molded in red. Not the worst thing in the world because, hey, it was going to be red anyway, but just something to keep in mind on. And the Fujimi, the Suzuki Jimny Land Venture, the white pearl car. If you watched our Inside the Stash video from earlier this week, or over there this weekend, you know that this comes with what I'm going to show you, but it was a huge shock. Wasn't mentioned anywhere. This kit came with water slide decals and metal transfers. So the thing in the back there, the big silver thing, are Mylar stickers. What's come in the Jimneys through the first four releases of that kit. This time, not mentioned, never said anything about it. It comes with a small sheet of water slide decals, which has all the stuff I said I wanted, right? Logos and gauge bezels and the GPS thing for the dash and... It's got some silver, some metal transfers there, Tamiya style for the logos and the big Suzuki logo. So this was super awesome to get and to see. Uh, it's a pretty expensive snap tag kit, all things included. But uh, to not use that Mylar sticker thing is so awesome that uh, I really don't care. <laughs> I'm just happy to have the decals. Uh, going over to Aoshima first. Aoshima's got two kits that are significantly uh, new or uh, reboxed, as it were. This is one of the reboxes, right? It's the Toyota Pro Box, Toyota's Pro Box Succeed. Originally, when these kits came out in 2017, they were two separate kits. And buy one to get the Pro Box, one to get the Pro Box Succeed. And then when you open them up, you realize the only difference between these two were the Succeed has hubcaps. And they're legitimately plastic hubcaps that go on over top of the steel wheels. Also, you install the back seats in the Succeed as a actual, like, car. The Pro Box is a delivery vehicle, and so it's designed to not have a back seat installed for cargo. Uh, it's a pretty neat little kit. It's quite odd, quite quirky. The whole front end of it is separate pieces uh, because there's a different Pro Box I figured they would have made by now that uses the back half from the windshield pillars back is the same, but the front end is a little bit different. Um, I don't know if they'll ever do it, but I think that's why it was tooled the way it is. And, uh, yeah, that's back out for the first time in a little while. And then the other release is this, the Blitz tuner version of the Toyota JZX100 Toyota Chaser Tour 5. Super stoked to see this one come back. It's been about 15 years since the last time this kit was released. Um, they were real, real plentiful for the longest time, and then they disappeared, and they have not been 
hide near her scene for about the last five to seven years, even in like secondary resale market in Japan. Very hard to find one of these that had good decals and was complete. So having this come back is, is cool. It's one of those things that was always in the back of my mind of being interested in, in getting, but I never did, and then I couldn't find any, so awesome. Happy to have that one come back. Over at Fujimi, a couple of reissues over there. Uh, just out of the blue, I guess. First up is the Mitsubishi Starion. This car is... It's not a good kit. Let's just put it that way. It's got a motorized chassis, universal chassis plate thing that Fujimi like to do. Um, very poor engraving. Very. It, this kit was tooled up in the 1980s when the Starion was a new car. So that tells you how old this is. And it's everything about a 1980s Fujimi kit that has nothing to... You wouldn't even believe this was made by the same company that made Enthusiast Series kits in the 1980s. Apparently they poured all their money into 911s and, and Ferrari Daytonas. They had no money left for anything else. This is a street car. You can build it either, either as a race car or a street car. Eh. If you want to build the race car, i got to tell you, go get the Nunu kit and be happy with that. Nunu made this kit specifically in this livery with those wheels. And if you don't have that kit, then any of the Sterians they've re released, along with this set of decals and those resin trans kit wheels from SK decals, will get you to the same place for a lot less aggravation and a lot better building model. The streetcar, it has left-hand drive. That's the only redeeming quality, I guess. It's not the greatest thing in the world. Buyer beware on that. Other thing is a DC5 Honda Integra Spoon. Um, this doesn't even have a different set of wheels than the Type R Integra kits do. Now, this isn't a necessarily a bad kit. It's a 2000s era Fujimi kit, so it's okay. Uh, it's just... There are like eight or nine boxings of this total throughout its lifetime, and none of them ever had a different set of wheels. They've all had this one specific set of Type R wheels. No matter what the tuner company that was associated with it always had this same set of wheels. I don't know why that is. The decals do not make a, do not make a spoon, right? There's more, more to this car than just a set of decals in real life. I'm pretty sure that... Uh, uh, Zoom on still makes the actual resin trans kit to turn the Fujimi kit into an actual legitimate spoon if you're interested in that. This is more like spoon uh, done by a 19-year-old guy who works at AutoZone. Uh, yeah, so the model itself, not bad. The spoon, not good. The carbon fiber for the hood, ridiculous. It looks like, you can't see it in this picture, but it looks like screen door mesh in the actual decal sheet. And... If you scale that out in real life, it would be like a, it would be like chain link fence material. It's ridiculous. I, twill is not a word anyone at Fujimi has ever heard of, at least, they, or they've never seen a picture of real carbon fiber, something along those lines. All right, so <laughs> moving on from the negativity, right? Over to Hasegawa, we got a, a number of reissues this month. They're all just straight reissues with little bit little tweaks. Tweak number one, the Toyota Corolla WRC in the 2004 Rally Monza version. This is Valentino Rossi's car from that uh, little rally. It's kind of goofy. They pour dirt on the Monza racetrack and make a rally out of it. Uh, so it's kind of a you know quirky little thing. Not really, you know, any... It's a special one-off, right? Uh, Valentino Rossi, obviously, a very popular driver. The 46, an iconic number uh, that he's drug around everywhere. Even his brand new Audi... Well, actually, now, at this point, WRT moved over to BMW. So, on his brand new BMW M4 GT3 this season, still carrying the 46 stylized like it is on this on the box art here. Just a new set of decals for that. Finished third in the rally, if you're interested in that part. Then you have the Moon Eyes Speed Equipment Custom Accessories version of the Datsun Bluebird 1600 Triple S. Decals are the only new thing about this kit. Otherwise, it carries the tradition of... The 1600 Triple S's that they've been making since 1994. Not a bad kit by any stretch of the imagination. Cute little car, uh, but just decals there. Over to the Toyota Celica 2000, 1973 Nippon All-Star Race. Uh, first place Division 2 in this uh, boxing of Kit uh, Kitakotomi uh, Son's car. They've made a bunch of his uh, cars over the course of time in the Celicas, the older ones, or not the older ones, but the less fender-flared version and the fender-flared versions that ran later into the 70s. Uh, so if you're collecting his stuff, <laughs> this is another option to do so. It does have the dreaded car does not match the prototype a thing in the literature, probably meaning that the wheels on the real car are different than the wheels in the kit. Uh, how much that matters to you? 
is totally up to you. Speaking of cars with new wheels, the last two reissues from Hasegawa are existing kits with brand new wheel sets. So first up, the Toyota 2000 GT with wire wheels. So yes, for the first time ever, believe that or not, since this kit's again something that's been kicking around since the mid-1990s, first time this kit has ever had wire wheels included in it. Uh, I guess they saw the Aoshima 2000 GT had wire wheels, and they were like, hey, hey, we can do that too. And, and, and so they did. So if you're interested specifically in that, otherwise it gets unchanged completely, just the wheels. And the other one is the Nissan Fairlady 240ZG custom wheel. 240ZG Fairlady's been around in Hasegawa again since probably the 1990s. This is just adding the Wantanabis in it. The interesting thing about this, or at least interesting to me anyway, and that's why you're here, what interests me, is the fact that these Wantanabis are labeled C110 on the sprue gate. And C110 is the 72 to 77 Nissan Skyline. As of right now, and at this point sitting here, I know the Hasegawa releases out into March, there are no C110 Skylines that come with Watanabe's. The GTR, 73 GTR, does not have them, and the 72 GTX does not have them. So I'm interested to see what future C110 Skyline has these Watanabe's included as an option, because... They're labeled for it, but as of yet, they don't exist <laughs> in the actual C110s. So that's a, a little bit of a, a, a quirk. <laughs> what is it? Uh, Doug DeMorris's quirk and quirk and oddity, something like that. Anyway, uh, yeah. I, I, sure, Hasago, we're not paying any attention. To <laughs> and the last two things we're talking about in this video are a couple of reissues from the folks over at BMAX Nunu. First up, in a new new boxing, don't understand why we changed from BMX to new new, but it is what it is. Don't actually have box art for this, but this is the, just imagine words around this picture. Uh, and it is the 1985 Safari Rally Toyota Corolla TA64. Uh, this kit exists. This was one of the, I think this was the third kit that, that uh, new new did. It was the second tooling that they did after the, the uh, ST165 Celica uh, from the 1980s. Be interesting to see in the PE for this kit, because this kit is already out in Hong Kong. It'll be coming out worldwide this month. This is obviously a Marlboro car, and this even back back in the day they didn't put tobacco liveries in the PE. Like right now, the joke has become since like the Audi Quattro S2 that if you want the tobacco part, just get by the PE set because it'll be in there. Uh, I don't know if that's true for this one or not because. It does have a specific new new labeled PE set. It exists. I've seen pictures of it, but I haven't seen pictures of the back of the package or the contents of the package, just the front of the package that just shows you the PE sheets and the instruction manual. Uh, so I don't know if there's actually Marlboro livery in this or not. It's not tremendously over the top Marlboro livery. It just has Marlboro Safari Rally on the placards and, and on the rally plates and things like that. It's, it's a pretty subdued uh, Marlboro livery, to be honest, but it is something that is missing from the kit. It does not include those things. And you had to, the first time around, when this was released originally, you had to go through uh, Taboo Design and get a little sheet of decals from them to fill in the Marlboro stuff. And then last kit is going to be a reissue of their AE92 Corolla Levin. This is for the 1989 Japanese Touring Car Championship Series in the Sugo round. The uh, Trampio, Team Trampio, uh, Fett Powercraft car. And uh, yeah, Hasegawa already did this car. So I don't know why we're doing it too. <laughs> Other than the fact that it's another way to quickly run the A92 tooling out uh, after doing the 1992 Advan car. So, yeah, new set of decals is pretty much all you're getting here. Uh, we'll have window masks in it. We should mention that for the TA64. They've stopped including the black decals and everything for the window surrounds, and they're including window masks and everything now. So that's an improvement over the other versions of this kit that have come out. Uh, Frankie over at SK did the Hong Kong or not Hong Kong, excuse me, the Macau, Gear Race Macau decals for this to change out uh, the FET Powercraft for a local car dealership. So those exist if you want to do something else. I'm betting the decals in this are better than the decals that Hasegawa makes. Hasegawa's decals are kind of shady. Even in this modern day, they, they don't, they're not shiny. 
and that bothers me because I don't like to clear coat race cars, especially race cars that would have been big vinyl appliques like this. This wouldn't have been painted, so it wouldn't have been shiny as the paint of the car would have been when this was applied in 1989. Uh, my intention would be then to build this out of the box using the kit decals and then take the Hasegawa kit of the same thing that I have, which I think is actually right behind me somewhere, right here. If you can see that or not, I'm not looking at the, the recording screen. And put Frankie's uh, Macau decals on that one so I don't have to use those, those livery decals. First world race car builder problems. That is what we're suffering here at the Stash Project. Anyway, guys, that is the expected kits for the month of February. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys on the other side.